Amen. Ah, good, good morning. Okay, it's morning already. I have been sick since yesterday. Okay, we are on Monday because it's new day, right? Okay. So I've been sick since since the last time I came for podcasting. To the point that when I when I went out, I couldn't walk. I was too weak to walk. <sighs> Yesterday, I showed it to I was sick at the same time. Right now, I'm still not very strong, but I'm stronger than before. And I was looking at myself just turning, turning on the bed, and I'm and I can't sleep, so I'm like ah. If I'm feeling like that, I'm feeling like I have little strength in me. You understand? And I'm I'm feeling like I should do something. <laughs> then definitely I know that I already have enough strength to stand up and do something for God. All the things that God has put in my hands are so plenty. So I'll just do one of them. And one of them is this podcast. So I just felt it that, okay, that means I have the strength. Even though I still feel a lot of pains in in some parts of my body, like my stomach. You know, I have not eaten for a long time, so... And I'm recovering. I've been eating, like, putting something in the stomach. Like, it has not been used to that for a while. So it's like, when you're just learning how to eat. <laughs> so my, my body is still not yet... Um, it has not yet fully recovered to it, but... It's adjusting. It's like when you just give it to a baby and you are trying to teach the baby how to eat. <laughs> you understand? But we thank God for the healing, for the grace and the power of God that I've also received in the, in the prayers. Because I was asking God, God, I don't see something tangible. I don't see something big. Like somebody should just say, collect this one million dollars. You know, I didn't see those kind of blessings. And the, Fasting was so stressful. It was, God, are you not just going to leave me like that without? And God told me that He answered the prayers. And uh, one of the things that God uh, brought to my mind at the end of the fasting, and let me see, during this period that I'm sick, which it is precisely, is this not Saturday, Thursday, Friday, between Thursday, Friday? That I should move forward into doing. I t- though I said I was not going to say, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to hide whatever is on my mind. If something is on my mind, I don't know how to hide it. Except if I'm doing that thing and there's no chance to talk to anyone. But if there's any chance to talk to anyone, I want to share it because I don't know. Like it should keep ringing in my mind. I have to do this thing anytime I talk about it. But when I don't talk about it, I might forget. So I pray that by God's grace, as I'm saying it, it doesn't stop me from still wanting to do it by God's grace. God, we, we send angels to make it possible in Jesus' name. Amen. So one of the things that God has placed on my mind is online course. <sighs> Please, guys, if you know how to do it, you can you can encourage me, you can help me. I don't know. I'm not even getting comments. I'm not getting anything. But this is one thing that God has asked me to do. And he told me that it's, it's an answer to my prayers. That it's not everybody that can do it. You understand? Even this podcast, I remember when God led me into it. Many people still don't know that it is possible to do it. You understand? God was telling me, okay, that's online school too. It's another lifting because even me, I was still like, ah, God, how am I going to do that? I was still considering so many things, which made me to know that when it's time for any of these other things that God has asked me to do, the power will just come from heaven, from above. Don't let me say from nowhere. <laughs> it will just come from from God that, okay, it's time. Move forward. So I'm so grateful to God that uh, the fasting didn't go in vain. It was so stressful that it landed me in sickness. <laughs> oh my God, on Saturday I couldn't walk. You know, two women were so scared for me. They came to meet me where I was sitting by the roadside. They said, ah, they were the ones that God used for me, Sha. 
you know it was like all i'm just trying to say that it's it's it was that we didn't pray in vain and that we can even pray despite all the weakness and god still um keep us alive we thank god that we didn't end the fasting into death we are not mocking anyone but i i want to believe that there are some people that fast and fast that much and it leads to one kind of sickness or the other or ulcer thank god i'm not i don't have ulcer the pain i'm feeling in my stomach is not ulcer it is just um, um because i've not eaten that kind of food for a while and i've not been eating constantly for a while so my body is just adjusting to it like it's it's healing like some healings are taking place in my stomach so that's it but it's not also so we want to thank god for everything we want to thank god for the work of god that has been going on day in day out for the progress this um school i'm almost calling it bible school but it's not bible school it's actually so many of these topics we are talking about in this our podcast but this time around you're going to be going there to actually register for a course so by god's grace i will start sell the buttons and everything i need to press today by god's grace so and um, also i've also been able to learn a lot through this my sickness that god also want me to that was my energy into other type of works like like all this stressful work you understand like saying help somebody to clean help somebody to cook help somebody to you understand you know my kind of is i like to help people but i think right now god doesn't want me to do any of those kind of jobs you understand some people don't appreciate it they don't even know what you are doing for them so this time around i i will still help people but like i should not make it my work like that will not stop me from doing things for god God doesn't want me to do that. So I have learned a lot through this um, sickness. You know, it's also one of the things I always share with us by the grace of God that everything that happens, they're all for the glory of God. You would think, oh, this sickness, I don't want it. I don't. But another way, it's another way of God speaking to us. When God says that, this daughter. She's she's running too much in one place. I don't want her to run. No. Like she's too much in that area. I don't want her to be. So let me give her sickness so that she can come and sit down in the house. <laughs> you understand? So we thank God that all is for His glory. We want to appreciate God. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us again for this podcast. And um, Father, Lord, I notice how much I get drained. At the time, I was thinking, is it an attack? You know, yesterday, I wanted to come for this podcast. I was like, God, hope it's not going to drain me again. I was just like, okay, please help me. It's until I, I see that my body was uh, fully kind of recovered. That's when I that's when I said, okay, by the grace of God, I'll come for this podcast. And then I was also praying, God, please, if it's attack, because of the truth I preach. Please, always send evil attacks back to the sender. Give me bullets proof against all this attack. So that when they send it, it goes back to the senders. In the name of Jesus. And you also strengthen you, Lord. So that it doesn't... I don't get weak fast. I've noticed him. Or maybe it's because I was not eating well in those times. Or there were some few sickness in my body that I didn't take notice of. But now, Lord, please... Heal me completely and help me to do this work of God in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, come and have your way. Father Lord, I want strength and strength and strength physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Father, strengthen me in the name of Jesus. Even financially, Father, strengthen me in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much. You have been teaching us. It's just as we as human beings, we don't know. You may not know how much this word of God has gone out. Because we said your word that you send us. You will not it will not return to you void. That's your promise. So as we human beings we can be like, ah God, what am I saying? Is it really helping people? Am I 
but <laughs> your own plan is really doing a lot that you want it to do. Father, we bless your name, we appreciate you. Father, Lord, as I've come again to surrendering myself to you, please, Lord, fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Father, please enable me. Help me. Don't let me speak words of my own. There are words of our own as human beings. And there is the word of God. Father, I want to speak only the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit fill me so that I can speak the word of God. Father, every evil arose, let it go back to the senders. Cover me with the blood of Jesus. Destroy every plan of darkness. Father, Lord, I soak myself with the blood of Jesus. Evil arose, go back to the senders. Father, this is the word of God. Please. And that's why I always pray before I even start it. Father, Lord, please envelop me. And the power of God puts me in the shadow of the Almighty. Under your protection, oh Lord, let me dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Let me dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Father, the word of God that is coming out today, let it preach to us. Let it talk to us. Father, Lord, I see so much of of where many of these attacks can be coming from. Imagine talking to someone, or let me say, imagine the message you are sending out is talking to someone that has members as big as let's say twenty thousand people and you are just here just the child of god that is in the corner <laughs> just speaking out the word of god you know it's like you alone fighting against twenty thousand people and more <laughs> it's to really take the power of god one way or the other they will drain you so maybe this is the reasons why i'm always drained i don't know but Lord, please fill me and refill me. Don't let me go into sin. Don't let my testimony be destroyed. Don't let the devil make mockery of me. Don't let the devil say he has caused me. Please have mercy on me. Please help me. Father, take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. <sighs> Sorry for too much of this preamble. And that prayer, I really needed it because... This is my sickness, my regular sickness after each podcast. It's getting me worried. Seriously, I'm already getting worried about it. Like, I cannot share it, brother. So, our topic today is lovest me more than all these things. If you remember, we first talked about a related topic like two podcasts ago. I said that by God's grace, when we do the continuation, we read the whole Bible passage, which is in uh, John chapter 21. Yeah. Maybe it's not the whole Bible passage, yeah, but we read the whole story from where it actually started from. Love is me more than all these things. Hmm. Today, God wants to speak to us. He's speaking to pastors more. Maybe that's why I'm feeling very drained. Like, the messages I'm preaching, they are, um, okay, I think we are reading from the, from the first, from the beginning, from the beginning to the, Jesus, Okay, I'll read from 1 to 25. It's not a problem. It's the word of God. Even if there are some verses that is not related, but then I, I know the word of God is power. It's power and it's powerful. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that powerful is like adverb, right? The word of God is power. It's like now. So, like it's, it's a power on its own. And it's doing a lot. So, let's read it from that verse 1. But uh, before we go on, you know, I was saying it that uh, these topics that we are doing in this uh, week series, you know, this week 3, I go with to tomorrow, Monday. But let me see now. We are, we are already in Monday. We are starting... Another week, which is week six, by God's grace. So, 
May God have, have mercy. <laughs> All this uh, lady name I'm doing. May God deliver me. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. So what I'm trying to say is that um God has uh plans. Oh let me say sorry, that's by the way. <laughs> I was I was looking at my I was talking to myself then. But what I'm I'm actually trying to say is that the message is to pastors, preachers, evangelists, ministers of the gospel, um, prophets, children of God. So may God open our understanding. May God give us the soft heart, the heart of flesh that will say, God, I surrender to you. When the word of God eat us hard, may God turn every stony heart to the heart of flesh. It's not a very good thing when the word of God comes out and we cannot humble ourselves. <laughs> it's not a good thing at all when we are feeling like we are wiser than God in our own eyes. It's not the will of God. So let's read before we start explaining because there are a lot to explain. A lot to learn, number one. Then number two, the time is running fast. 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathanael of Canaan, Canaan, of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, the two other of his disciples, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter says unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he got his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the nets with fishes. As soon they as they were come to land, he saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Hmm. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have no, now caught. Hmm. Simon Peter went up, and drew the nets to land, full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three, and for all that were so many, yet was not this net broken. Hmm. Jesus said unto him, Come and die. And none of the disciples dost, dost ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then commented, And take bread, and give it them, and fish likewise. This is now the first time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than this? Hmm. He says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Hmm. He says to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my sheep. He says unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? 
Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. 18. Now, verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou gathered thyself and walkest without Without thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be healed, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall guard thee, and carry thee without thou wouldest not. Hmm. This prayer key is signifying by what death it should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto them, unto him, Follow me. Hmm. Then Peter, turning about, said the disciple whom Jesus loved, following which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter said, See him, says to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but... If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifies of these things and wrote these things, I will know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, that which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So the message that God has for us, is do you love me more than these things? Are you loving God because of miracles? You know, uh, could I say I heard it somewhere or I was inspired to know it? <laughs> or maybe someone said it, that the reason why a lot of these big, big churches are full is because they are going there for miracles. Many of them don't want to be saved. They don't care about salvation. It is because of the fake miracles. The fine, we know that one way or the other, these people are using some demonic powers to attract people. But let's put those demonic powers. Let's put it out. One of the reasons why they are going out, they are going there, so that they can become rich, so that they can be as rich as Dangote, so that they can be rich as a dollar, so that they can be, you know, so many things like that. But have they become as rich as Dangote? Because if we thought they run into all these pastors now, we should have had another person with as much glory as Dangote that his business is, uh, is as big as Dangote's own since all these days, but we have not seen. So that has to tell you that many of them, they are just trying to deceive people to come into them. You understand, but what are we trying to say? Jesus is talking to us. God is speaking to us. Do you, do you love me because of your needs? Do you love me only when you have food? Do you love me only when you have car? When you just get married and you are, you are, you, are, you just give birth and you are happy and you are like, oh God, thank you. This God is good. Somebody come and join me, sing Hallelujah. Is that the only time you love Jesus? Is that the only? Do you also love him in times of of difficulties? I remember when I was in uh, university in Nigeria, I was told about the story. They said the lady had an accident, and maybe some people died in the accident, but she she was like, she should not have had that accident. So because she had that accident, she now stopped serving God. <laughs> you know? You will have those kind of situations as human beings. Is it because of of such things that you love God? Is it because of of like some situations will come to test you to see if you really, really love God? So Jesus was asking Peter, Do you love me more than all these things? Even when I'm not answering your prayer, do you still love me? Like me, like I was I was talking about. I was talking about my uh, I was sharing my testimony, maybe testimony, maybe experience, any one of the two, that I just completed the fasting that has made me to be extremely sick. Seriously, I'm still very sick, even my height. I can't say I'm very sick, because compared to Saturday, it was worse. But I'm not strong. 
You understand? I still can't do so much. Oh, my body is not yet feeling like my body, but yet I'm a lot better. But what I'm trying to say is that the fasting led to me falling sick. There's a difference between when you are weak and when you are actually sick. It's led me to being sick and uh, I was expecting that I would, somebody would just come and just say, oh, I've given you a big job, come and collect the job and they will pay me like $20,000 in a month, you know. I have big dreams, but God didn't do it. But did God still answer the prayer? Is God still God? Yes, He's still God. And you know, one thing we don't know, or let me say, one of the things that God wants to do for us is to give us a lasting wealth, a generational wealth. People like, ah, which family can I mention? Me? That they have been rich from forefathers, then the children met with that um, company. The children, children met with that company. Like generational wealth. Some people leave problems for their children, children, and children. But some, they leave wealth. And how do you get this wealth? You get it by allowing God to lift you up. Then it's someone that God wants to use. You understand? So that's it. So sometimes what God wants to give you is a lasting wealth. The wealth that even when you retire, the wealth is, is increasing. The wealth that the money you, you made from the uh, riches last year, by the time it's this year, it has increased. You understand? Because it's of no, it's of no good value or good use. When in a few parts of your years, Let's say in your 20s, 30s, you are very rich. Then in 50s, you are poor. It's not really a good thing. The best is, even if in your 20s, 30s, you are still struggling to make some money, you understand. Then as you are increasing in years, it's increasing. The money too is increasing. The riches is increasing. This is really the will of God for us. That's how I think that is the will of God for us. You understand? Oh, Jesus, my stomach is still paining me. Jesus, rush me to blood. So what I'm trying to say, I'm sorry, I've not been professional about this talk, 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 but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if I don't talk about it, it affects what I have to say, you know. That's why I always pour out my heart. Once I pour out my heart, I can focus. You understand? So what I'm trying to say is that um, God doesn't want us to just have a wealth of today and tomorrow, we don't have anything again. That is why many times it's making us to go through the things we are going through. I was expecting somebody would just come and say, I've got a job, come and collect it, come and collect $20,000. But if I collect $20,000, $20,000 in a few months, and I say, go to your house, $20,000 will finish one day. But if it's something that is with generational wealth, or let me say, like, a, like my own source of income that God provided for me. You understand? It continues to increase, it, because in in working for somebody, you have to negotiate. Like, okay, this is how much we are going to be paying you, and God has seen all these things. These are my experiences I'm sharing, actually. God has seen all this. God has seen that, ah, my daughter, if I just allow you to work for these people, they will lower you. They will limit you. And I have greater plans for you. So God will allow them to say no to you. So what I'm still trying to say there is that love is me more than all these things. He's talking about, do you love God even when his plans doesn't fit what you have in mind? Let's say that there's someone and I say, ah, before 30, I should be married. And then, at 29, you are still not married. Even up to 30, you are still not married. Are you going to forsake God and start doing sinful things because, uh, maybe because you are taking your stand, you are thinking that is the reason why you are not finding him. Are you going to leave the standard of God and, and start following Satan? Or you will just wait on God. You will continue to love God. More than your food, more than your riches. You see, you see, 
Job, Job was an example of a man that loved God more than all these things. Even Satan thought he loved God because of, of the riches and the wealth. But today, we see that church members, even pastors, they don't love God more than these things. They love these things more than God. You understand? Women nowadays, that is, that people always say women are more in the house of prayer. Many of them are not in the house of prayer because of salvation of that. So they are there. God, give me money. God, give my children money. God, uh, more miracle. It's not that we are not going to pray for all these things, though, but I'm just saying that a lot of people, it's not that it is a love for God that is so plenty like that. You see some people say, after they left Babalao house, they left Safa house, they now go to an, a prophet to still go and pray for them. So is it that they came to that prophet because they know that Jesus saved and when he saves, he wants us to get to him. Is that the reason why they are going to that prophet? No, they are not going there because of that. They are going to the prophet because of what they are, um, the miracle they need, you understand? And it's not that God will not do it, but I'm just trying to say that God has plans that we should love him more than all these things. You have learned it in, in a few weeks ago. That, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is the promise of God. It's not for us to now start saying, eh, let me pursue the wealth then. No, there's no need. God will supply our needs. God will take care of us. He has always been more than all these things. Meaning, He wants us to love Him more than food. The disciples, they left the assignment God gave to them, even though they didn't have the power at that time. But it was looking like maybe they were just running after Jesus because of the food. But eventually, Jesus Christ, he made them to stand. With that prayer, he has prayed for Peter. And Peter wants to sweep you like it, but I have prayed for you. And God prayed for, for Peter and he was able to make others to stand too. Peter also was able to stand and he could strengthen other people. May God help us. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for tonight's uh, podcast. Thank you for everything you have spoken to us. Father, please, we have seen ourselves that we cannot help ourselves and say we help us. Father, please help us to love you more than all these things. Jesus, please help us, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, open our understanding. Give us hearts to receive you in the name of Jesus. Father, please fill me and fill me with the Holy Spirit. Father, cover me with the blood of Jesus and the virus back to the senders. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.